In this episode, we'll take a tour through the factory of Rand's Designs. You eat maybe a meal off this floor, Randy? Well, no. No, okay. Gosh, we lost count how many times we've taken it to 9Gs. You put the customer's name on every airframe. Right, Brian, let's not get anything started, okay? All right, I'm in Hayes, Kansas today. Hayes, Kansas, home of Rand's Designs, Rand's Aircraft. And I'm gonna give you a tour of their assembly area. And we spin around here real quick. Randy's gonna give us a tour of the assembly area. Not the manufacturing, because that's where the secret sauce is. Good afternoon, I'm Randy Schlitter. I'm uh, CEO of Rand's Designs. And we're gonna take a look around today. Right now, Flat yeah, section. We're, we're, we're looking at the wing assembly station. There's multiple stations for all the different components of the aircraft. And this big uh, room here is what we call the assembly hall. And it has uh, a big hangar door at the end and taxi you right out and take off on our own runway. All right, so you do everything here from uh, the wings in the tail section in this yeah, table the area? Major, the major components of the airframe are assembled on this side of the mezzanine. And then uh, the fuselage will make a trip over to the paint shop and it comes back. We assemble the fuselage to the minimal state to start uh, to allow for the paint job and then do the final assembly. Okay. And so. well, while we're over in this area, uh, one thing that really impressed me about your design is your spar. I see several of them stacked over here. So let's walk over here and talk about your spar for a minute. Uh, what you're looking at is what we call a D spar, obviously, because it's uh, D shaped. And it's basically an I beam with a leading edge shape for the chosen airfoil for the application. So you have about a five inch plus I-beam, and then this part is of course your leading edge, and it's about nice and solid 070. So uh, we like to say that the bird will lose in this case, that's well, your leading edge. And we take this blank, uh, we have it extruded to spec, and then we take the blank and machine it out for all your holes in your um, uh, lightning holes and everything's ready to go for you to do your final assembly of the spar. Uh, such as attaching doublers and whatnot to allow you to uh, attach the components such as ribs and the, what we call the wing truss. Uh, we're starting a wing assembly. You can see the components are laid out. This is uh, the finished spar. We've gone ahead and cut the openings for the landing light. If you look at the other side of it, you'll see how it's been uh, machines to reduce weight and also give your rib hole locations, which are final hole size, by the way. And then you see the rear spar here, and Eddie's already attached uh, the first step to the um, rear spar attachment. And it's also been machined out, final hole size, and ready for all the components. And then this is one of the most important components. That's your, what we call our wing, uh, wing truss. And what that does, it bolts together the two spars. So now you have two spars actually working with the uh, aerodynamic loads. And that gives you a very good um, strength to weight ratio. And it also gives you a nice feature of having the fuel tank between the two spars and having the fuel exactly on CG. It also opens up your cabin for easier entry. And this one is well, we don't know what this is. No, we actually know what this is. This is the flap bell crank, and it has cable guides on top of it for the aileron cable. And this is our aileron pulley we manufacture here. And it's got an interesting feature. It has this oval-shaped hole, and it has this tube, and uh, guess what we do with that? We use that for rigging. So when you're setting up your airplane, you just take a piece of quarter-inch rod or a bolt, and you put it up inside there, and that locks both of your bell cranks exactly neutral, so you can set up your ailerons and uh, rig them up. Hopefully, it, it's an easy process for our builders. Generally speaking, a wing assembly takes, what do you figure, Eddie, about 60 hours to have a ready to go to paint? Ready both, to paint. Uh, that's for both wings. That is correct, about 60 hours. Yeah. 60 hours, you said? 60 hours. For each wing? For a set of wings. For a whole set of wings, set. okay. So you, as a first time builder, might take 65, or maybe 130, we don't know. <laughs> All right, Randy, what do you got going over here? It looks like rudders. Are you about to do a rudder workshop? 
So uh, yes, tomorrow we're having two rudder workshops, one in the morning and one in the afternoon. And I think we're doing a total of how many rudders? Ten. We'll be doing ten rudders, yeah. About about how long does it take for a first timer to do a rudder? How long is the uh, workshop? You know, we've seen them go from, uh, what, two and a half hours, I think is average. We used to send this out with the curve in it already. And since the builder's having to do that also on the elevator, we just moved that over to the rudder as well. We saved ourselves a lot of headaches and damage and shipping because of it. One thing we like to do, one thing we say about the outbound is you really don't have to paint anything. You can actually build the entire aircraft without opening a can of paint. And that's because all the steel parts in the kit come either painted or powder coated. And this little assembly is a powder coated part and it's your rudder horn that attaches to the spar and then your actual horn bolts onto it and creates an assembly that's ready to go. So no messy paint jobs. Uh, this is where the welding happens in the uh, obviously the weld shop. Uh, our aircraft starts out here as a bundle of tubing as you can see on the rack there. This machine here miters all of our tubing to the exact miter that the welder needs to fit into the cage. It's a pretty agile machine. You can actually if you want, you can write your name in the side of a piece of tubing. That is awesome. Yeah. We don't do that on every airplane, though. <laughs> you put the customer's name on every airframe. Right, Brian. Let's not get anything started, okay? Now, if we turn around, we'll show you some of the jigs and the uh, welding happening. Right in front of us, a uh, finishing jig. They got a couple of those. What they start with is they have sub jigs that they build with cross members such as like this member and one here and one here and then they'll make a side frame remember when you're a kid and you built those Boston mo wood models yeah it's the same thing but just do, uh, using metal instead of uh, wood sticks so this is what we call a dog house you know both sides is a side frame jig to build not only the 20 but the 21 and uh, we build a bunch of side frames left and right, so you can see them up there. Then they move them from the storage rack into the 3D rack. And once it's in, a, once it's in the 3D jig, they bring all the other components that you can see also hanging on the wall. And they knit together a 3D model of the aircraft. And they weld it as far as they can. All of our jigs rotate, so uh, you don't have to be an expert in yoga to build an airplane here. They pop it out of that, then they go to what we saw earlier, the uh, finishing jig. And that also rotates and allows you to weld in every place and get gravity on your side when you build the airplane. The welding process we use on this, Brian, is we use uh, obviously MIG welding, but we also TIG weld the uh, more high precision areas such as some of the bushings that hold on the engine mount and things like that. And some sub components also are TIG welded and obviously aluminum welded components are TIG welded. Hey, before we get too deep into this, let me thank our sponsors that make all of this possible. Great companies like Airworks, Acme Aero, AirTech Coatings, Kit Plane Parts, Stoll Creek Aviation, Deland Sport Aviation Showcase edge performance. So take a moment after this video to say hello to all of them and remember to check out the affiliate links in the description below. And remember, just build it. Let's get back to it. So one thing I want to point out while uh, walking through here, I can see how clean this shop floor is. Uh, I think Randy prides himself that you could quite possibly eat off this floor, right? Would you, would you eat maybe a meal off this floor, Randy? Well, no. No, okay. I don't like dirt that much, but it is fairly clean. Right now, it's really messy in here. It is really clean. Yeah, it's there's, really there's no, messy. There's no paint, there's no oil. And we built three of these, two big ones and one little baby one. And the two big ones, you can load a few slods and two uh, wings, and then you can pump away and flex wings and do fatigue analysis. And so, so what have you stressed your wing tube on this contraption here, this medieval contraption? <laughs> Well, they didn't have hydraulics like this back then. Yeah? Yeah, this is, you know, touch one deal, 
digital readout. Uh, this has been, that wing in there has been cycled, oh gosh, we lost count how many times we've taken it to 9Gs. So it's been up and, up and down a lot. But it's called what they call a whiffle tree in the business, where you start out with a single point of uh, force uh, application and a um, load cell up there. That's that little S-shaped thing up there is the load cell. And then it comes down like a big mobile and picks up about 40 or so uh, attach points on your wing so you can simulate as best as possible the air loads on the uh, structure. It's cool in here. Yeah. This is the uh, paint shop where we do the liquid painting. Uh, we have a powder coat operation on the other side of the factory where we sandblast and powder coat. But over here, we've taken the assembled product and uh, Cope is getting ready to paint a cowling, it looks like, but uh, fuselage is coming out soon. And what we use here is basically automobile paints like urethane base and stuff like that. All right, so one thing I wanted to point out while I'm here, which unfortunately I cannot show you because it's sort of off limits to cameras and video cameras, is Rand's aircraft, is, it's a really cool place. They are set up to do basically all, any and all manufacturing for aircraft. I don't think they have I'm sure they have a few outside vendors for their stuff, but they have the capability of producing pretty much anything that they want. And it's really amazing to see that. They've got the CNC equipment, they've got great big brakes, they've got uh, dies and presses, everything. So if you ever get here to Rand's, I invite you to take a tour with Randy, with, with Michelle, Shelly, and see kind of the behind the scenes, which I can't show you that part of it. I can show you today the assembly area which is impressive too. And people here are working on the SLSA, so it's their SLSA assembly area. Um, but that, that just really impressed me. They've got the dies made up to uh, stamp out this and hydroform that, and it's just a really, really, it's legit. Rand's is a legit place here. Really cool studio sign, which I might make one of those for myself. But So what do you got going on here today? Uh, well, of course, we're building uh, 21s. There's um, one nearing final, uh, yeah, about uh, probably about a week away from flying it. Okay. And of course, you saw earlier Eddie's working on a set of wings, and the fuselage for the other one's going to be coming out pretty soon. So, what is the, what are some of the popular options that you're getting on this SLSA? SLSA means you, you kind of have to stick to a certain format, right? So you've got what one or two engine options that you can do through SLSA, and you stick to that. Correct. We are building them with uh, the 340 mostly right now. The Titan 340, 180 horse. Uh, we're going to be working on a uh, Titan 320 option. Uh, that is a less horsepower engine. It seems kind of odd to do it, but there's some people who like the slight weight reduction and slight cost reduction, and also the lower operational cost of that engine. So. I think that engine's going to be a, a very good marriage for that airframe. And uh, they're exceptionally smooth engines, so it'll be a lot of fun. And we also uh, been using the Detune 340 that's only uh, the lower compression at 174 horse. And those are a nice motor too. And I've noticed a nice trend, a really nice trend from our Titan engine supplier. All their engines are getting nicer, more smooth, and uh, more consistent product. And I really appreciate that. And behind me, which I'll go a little bit closer here in a minute, is a rudder workshop. They've got two classes today, kind of like an A and B. Uh, they'll be here for about three or four hours building the rudder, so it's apparently a very quick rudder build to only have that kind of... Uh, time investment to it. So it takes several hours. Obviously, I'm not gonna cover the entire thing on camera. I'm gonna hopefully get the highlights and kind of show you uh, what's involved in it. I'll give you a quick tour of what's going on so far. They're into it right now, about 45 minutes already. So I wasn't able to get here right when they started. Cut to the center, yeah. then flip it over and start from the center up okay. to the other side. Yeah, you can probably tighten it too much. Yeah. Well, it's not, it's not tight. No need to deform the, the aluminum. I'm sure. I mean, it's a serious. It's like it's soft, so it will be also bent around this tight. 
There. Don't worry about it now. And then it does get your five stick washers that you had on there. Yeah. That was the thing that was. do drill this hole, which is what we're preparing to do, it's nice to have this support closest to it because we'll be pushing away with the drill, so having it supported properly there is, is important. Okay. Very good. Down. Pushing down, pushing down, pushing down, a little past 180, a little bit more, there you go. I was going to try to get this into a step by step, but these guys, most everybody here is a think a first timer, got this thing done in four hours, so check it out. Where are you from, Joel? Yuma. Yuma. Where are you from, Hayes, Kelly? Kansas. Hayes, right here in Hayes. And Dan, Dan, and I'm here from Hayes, Kansas as well. All right. Well, looking forward to seeing you guys complete your airplane. You can call me back so I can uh, check out your flying plane. Excellent. Can you talk just a minute how you go from that over there on paper, actually, actually from your from your mind creativity to paper to computer to production? What is what does that look like? No. I'm gonna sit. I'm gonna sit down for a talk here with Randy Schletter. So you go from an idea of sketching on a sketch pad or a napkin kind of draw it out and then what are you using for software these days to get things into more production? Uh, we use uh, two different programs. We use SolidWorks and we use uh, AutoCAD. And uh, there's no napkins involved here, Brian. We, okay. uh, we actually have official RANS printed paper, you know, with our, our logo. We have these <laughs> and we also have the 11 by 17 sheets that we make in a big book like this so yeah there's no napkins involved here you know we uh i stay out of, i stay out of the bars and i don't that, have those that's something you'd see at hobby lobby or something but, yeah uh, yeah and we have the paper printed to our spec on the, the scale and everything so nice yeah we're serious about you know doing it on paper and going the way over to cad but it's not exclusively done on paper. Sometimes I dive right in on CAD. I used to say that the soul of an aircraft, a good aircraft is born on vellum. <laughs> but I've kind of been convinced that this device is highly superior. So. Gotcha. All right, well, thanks for the tour through the assembly area. I'm gonna stick around and get some uh, other footage of the shop. Remember to like and subscribe. Also check out our sister channel at EAC Aviation Podcast on YouTube, which also can be found on Podbean, iTunes, and Google Play. In another video, I went flying with Randy in the S21. You'll find the link in the description below. So head on over and check out that video too. I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.